to give you a better idea of what we were talking about in our uh, newsletter article and our blog called Giving Your Photos Some Tender Loving Care, and also to kind of give you an idea of what we do in our Photoshop Elements classes, I thought we would do a real quick fix here on a picture I affectionately call the kids. First thing is we've already opened up the kids picture and we're here inside of Photoshop Elements. This is version 6 that we're using, but version 7 and version 5 both look very similar to version 6. First thing we're going to do is we're going to crop off the edge and to do that we use a tool called the crop tool. We grab the crop tool from our toolbar, we come up to the picture and then we drag out a rectangle around what we want to save on the picture. Once we've adjusted the rectangle we can sort of move it in and out, up and down, until we just get exactly what we want for the crop. And then to finish the crop, we just click the little check mark. There we go, and we now have a cropped picture. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust what are called the levels. Levels are a fancy way of saying brightness and contrast, but the way that we're going to do it with levels actually works a lot better than the plain old brightness and contrast controls. And in this particular case, we're going to come over here to the side panel and we're actually going to add what is called an adjustment layer. Now, in our classes, we go through all kinds of information about layers and how to use them. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and show you that to create an adjustment layer, we click on this funny looking little white and black button, which drops down a menu, and on that level, on that menu, we have an option called levels. This will add a new levels adjustment layer. And in fact, it will open up a little window here called the Levels window where we can adjust the brightness and contrast um, with a lot more precision than we can with just the plain old brightness and contrast controls. So to do that, I'm going to come down here to this little graph that we call a histogram. And I'm going to slide these three triangles called the black point, the gamma or midpoint, mid uh, tone point, and the white point. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and drag this over to the left. That's the black point. We're going to drag the white point over to the right. And then as we watch the picture, and especially the faces of the little girls here, which is the most important thing, we're going to drag the gamma back and forth just to brighten them up a little bit. We can kind of see a little bit of a before and after if I check and uncheck this preview button. So we'll uncheck it. There's the before and we'll check it again. There's the after. Okay, looks like that'll pretty much do it. Again, we're kind of dealing with the quick and dirty method here today. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Next thing we're going to do then is we're going to get rid of some of this yellowing that we have here. This, this photo could possibly be a sepia tone, but I tend to think it's probably just yellowed a little bit over age. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to again come over to our layers and this time we are going to add what is called a hue and saturation adjustment layer. As soon as we click here, it'll pull up the hue and saturation window. And what this window is really great for is to help kind of get rid of discolors or, or colorations that you don't really like. So what I will do in this case is I'm going to go up to this little drop down list called a master list which shows us a list of all the different color types or the basic colors that are used in this picture also called color channels and because yellow is the main culprit here we're going to slide down and click on yellows we're going to come down to our saturation slider and we're going to slide it to the left and you can see that as we do the yellows disappear Again, we can check and uncheck a preview checkbox here just to see before and after. Looks good. Going to click OK, and there we go. Now, just because it's kind of fun to do, I am going to go ahead and go back to my levels layer here, and we're going to open this back up again. And you can see now that the levels have actually changed just a little tiny bit once I remove the color. So we're going to do some adjustments here, and we're going to brighten these girls up even a little bit more. There we go. We'll kind of mess around with them a little bit there. And then click OK. All right. Now, the last thing that we need to do in our quick fix exercise is take a look down here at the corner at these scratches that we have. And to work on those, we're first of all going to grab the Zoom tool. We're going to put that on top of where we want to zoom in, and I'm going to click a few times. And you'll notice that as we click, we actually zoom in and get closer. 
And what I'm going to do in this case, and I'm even going to get a little bit closer here, is we are going to take out this tear. And to do that, we are going to use a great tool called the Clone Stamp tool. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is go up and adjust the brush size of the Clone Stamp tool. Make it a little bit bigger here, and that doesn't look too bad. Let me make it a little bit smaller, maybe. Oh, in between. There we go. And then, basically what the Clone Stamp lets us do is it lets us select and paint uh, over one part of a picture with another part of the picture that will make it blend in to the background. So in this case here, I'm on the girl's leg. I'm going to do what's called an Alt, which, hold, which means hold down the Alt key, and then click my mouse. That sets my source paint point. And then as I come over and I start painting, you'll see the tear disappear. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I actually do this cloning, and, and sometimes it's useful to do that, is I'm actually going to take these other layers that I've created over here, and I'm going to flatten them out and, uh, and, and basically make them all merge together into one picture. So we'll go to the Layer pull down, and we're going to choose Flatten Image. And you can see now over in our Layers palette, we just have a single image. This will make it a little bit easier for us to clone. All right, let's go back over here. We'll do our Alt Click and we'll start our cloning. Now you can see that as I'm cloning there's a little cross. The little cross is where we're dragging the paint from as we clone. Okay. Now we're down to our shoelace. I'm going to go back over and reselect. Alt click again. Alt click again and each time I alt click it allows me to sort of reselect the paint which gives me a lot more control over the clone process here. And I'm going to grab alt click a little bit of her shoe and come down this way and you can see some texture in her shoe here and I I think it makes sense for us just to kind of use that texture and draw down to the rest of her shoe where the tear is. Okay. We'll go down to the floor here and do an alt click and kind of get rid of that. Alt click here and just kind of get rid of that. And so that looks a little bit better. That looks a little bit better. Now, I'm going to scroll over to the side and to the corner so we can get these tears out of the way. And this will be really easy to do. Again, we'll just do an alt click to choose our source. Just kind of wipe those out. Do another alt click up here. Just kind of wipe those out. It's really as simple as that. It doesn't really take a lot for tears. I'm going to do another alt click here. And we'll just kind of paint all the way down. Alt click here. And then we'll get rid of this corner tear by doing another alt click and just kind of painting out this corner. Now, I'm going to move across the bottom of my picture because I think that there's another little tiny imperfection here. Again, Alt-click and Paint. Go clear over here, and that's not too bad. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got. Let's click on the Zoom tool, and I'm going to right-click and choose Fit on Screen, and there we go. Now, there's lots of other things I could do to this picture. Bottom line is, though, you can see that we made some pretty decent improvements. We, uh, we changed the brightness and contrast. We got rid of the yellowing. We took out some of the tears at the bottom. This is what you'd call, again, a kind of a quick and dirty basic fix-up of these pictures. And these are the kind of things that we go through in our classes down at Senior Health Foundation, in our Photoshop Elements classes. Um, and we would love to have you come down and join us for those classes. So thanks for listening, and we hope to hear from you soon.